the Bible is an idol. Now, Abraham believed the invisible God as though he were. And this is what you've got to do. You, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, the Holy Ghost is in me. You can't see the Holy Ghost in me. And you know why God don't let our face shine today like he did with Stephen's in? Because they put us in a laboratory somewhere. So he gives us a measure of the Spirit because he knows how to control things on earth. Now, I want you to get a hold of this. Just like take a breath. You can't see that air you're breathing, but it's keeping you alive. You can't see the electricity that flows down the line, but it lights up the whole city. So you can't see a lot of things that are invisible. You can't see love. Oh, I love you. Well, you can't see that. It's a feeling. It's, it's a truth that's real. Remember to serve the invisible God. I want to tell you, little Holy Ghost people, you've got to get this because in my times past in dealing with the Holy Ghost, I didn't do right. God had to teach me not to neglect the Holy Ghost, to stir up the gift of God in me. And we're kept by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. We only know that we're saved by the Spirit that He gives us. That's how you know you're saved. This is our connection to God. This is God in us. You've got to learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost, live in the Holy Ghost. I wanted, when I started out in the gospel, I wanted to be like, Oil robbers and them casting out devils and healing the sick and, and prophesying and miracles and all them things. I thought that's the way Jesus run his church. That's the way the apostles and them did. But he had a different thing for me. Well, I never did know I was going to be preaching the Bible's the mark of the beast because these people made him an invisible God, a God that's visible, a Bible that you can see. They made him an idol that they can see. Well, we worship the invisible God. Now, pay close attention to this because this is what makes us Christians. You can't be a Christian without the anointing. The, a Christian means you're anointed. You have life in you. You're seeing me here, and this is what people go up. Don't go by that. Go by what you can't see. That's where the real power is. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, I want to go over with you some things that made us. This is what made us. This is our history. This is not Bible or history. Holy Ghost people, that's our history. We're, we're, the, we're the only Holy Ghost people on here. Most of them will teach you, you got to go by the letters in red. Well, that puts you on the old covenant and puts you in hell. You can't go by them letters in red. Love your neighbors yourself. That's under the law. You can't go by that. You can't go bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's under the law. You can't go but make the Sabbath day holy. That's under the law. You'll go to hell. That's why the men that uh, went up and had a big... Uh, council meeting with the apostles, and it said it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. You see, when they sent letters to them that, that went, many went out from amongst us saying you must be circumcised and keep the law. He said, to whom we gave no such commandment. Now that seemed good to the Holy Ghost. That's why it said it seemed good to the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost writes his laws in your heart. Now think about what the Holy Ghost can do. Think Paul had the Holy Ghost, and he said, now the Spirit speaks expressively. That in latter times, sun shall depart. People used to say, how do you know that? I said, the Spirit speaketh expressively. Expressively. This nation is getting weaker and weaker. Ever since he showed me that, it's got weaker and weaker. you got 60-some million people on Social Security. you got millions of people on food stamps and government housing and now government health. you got them on it. It's getting weaker and weaker and weaker like the Spirit showed me. So listen to the voice of God. He speaks in you. Now, I was praying under my tree one night. And I was going to be a Holy Ghost preacher. And the Holy Ghost was praying in me. He said, have mercy on me, O God. In my belly, it was going over and over. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O God. Now, I didn't have enough sense to know this was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. The Holy Ghost in me was praying for me. Now, that was a miracle. But I didn't understand as a kid. I had to grow. And I apologized to him 10 trillion times. Oh, I wish I had said I want to go where God wants me to go. But I didn't know why I was going. I had to live by faith. It was years and years and years before I got uh, the Bibles, the mark of the beast, and got the ministry going. Okay, but the Holy Ghost forgave me because I didn't know. He was praying for me. Now listen to this, how they was filled with the Holy Ghost, and they would do things. And when the Holy Ghost fell, they all began to speak with other tongues. God was in them. God was in them. And Peter said, Ananias, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? He lied to the Holy Ghost. Didn't have to. It was in his own power. But he lied to get back some money. Don't lie to the Holy Ghost. 
Because he's right in you here and he knows. He won't, you, you're, you're not under subjection uh, to your own mind. And so if you're under subjection to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, Stephen Stone said, you stiff necks and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. They quench the Holy Ghost. That's what they do. They don't want the Holy Ghost. And Paul would ask them, said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we haven't even heard there be any Holy Ghost. Today, they haven't even heard about the Holy Ghost. They don't understand the Holy Ghost. They don't relate to the Holy Ghost or nothing. And the Spirit would speak to Philip, join yourself at that chariot. That's the way God got his work done. Now, watch him get his work done. And while Peter thought on this vision, where it come down, you know, he said, I'm not eating that, nothing unclean under my mind. He said, the Spirit spoke to him, said, three men seek you. He said, go with them and doubt nothing because I've sent them. And they ministered the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, separate you, me, Paul and Barnabas. So they were separated by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God in you. Now, let me give you a little bit of relationship while I'm teaching about the Holy Ghost. I get excited because this is real to me. I can feel a tingling in my soul. And he's the one that bears witness. See, we're one spirit. If you feel in your spirit, you say, that's right, that's right. That's one spirit. We bear witness with one spirit. This is why we're one in, in God. And uh, they got 441,000 different denominations with Bible worshipers. They don't have one spirit. We have one spirit. This boy lived by the, the Mississippi River on the Delta down in the Delta Plains. And he raised on the Mississippi. His daddy take him fishing when he was little. And he lived on the Mississippi. He swam in it. He'd take his boat out fishing. He raised his crops by the Mississippi's rich, fertile soil in the Delta. And he loved the Mississippi River. And he was there for about 60 years or something. And the doctor said, you got to get away from all that uh, breathing. you got to go to Arizona. He said, I'll miss the Mississippi River. So he got him a big old bucket. And he filled it, he filled it full of water out of the Mississippi. And he set it in his house out in Arizona. And he'd go over and sit by his bucket. He said, that's, that's part of the Mississippi. Now, if you don't get related any other way than this, than this river that flows out of your body, like 120 of them, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. If you can't relate but just to this boy with his bucket full of water, there's a bucket full of Holy Ghost water in me. <laughs> just relate to it like that. Living water. He'd go over and sit by his bucket. He didn't want to leave the Mississippi. I don't have the whole Mississippi in me, but I got me a bucket of water in me. It's been poured out. Seen it in the vision. Bucket's in it. Jesus has poured out the living water on me and her. The living water lives in me. Now you can have this, but pray in the Holy Ghost. Learn how to. Don't pray to some white-headed man sitting out yonder 10,000 miles. The Holy Ghost connects us up to Jesus. When the Holy Ghost prays for you to Jesus, you'll get an answer. We don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Ghost in us does. Get a relationship with the Holy Ghost that lives in you and then your sons and daughters of God. Most of these people read about the Holy Ghost. Don't read about the Holy Ghost. Live in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift and promise of God, which is the Holy Ghost. A sword had pierced the heart of a mother crying. Her son was dying. She did not understand. She loved him so, she had held him in her hand. As her tears ran down, there was darkness upon the land. Eloi, Eloi, he cried for his father. All hope was gone as they laid him in the tomb. The father came to earth that day. The stone was rolled away. This world will never be the same. Elohim is his name.